Hey everybody, welcome to Bike Ombre. So it's just been revealed by Trek that there's a new bike in their fuel lineup and it's called the EXE. And surprise, surprise, it's an e-mount bike. So in this video, we're gonna go over the geometry, the builds and pricing for this new model. And on a quick side note, if you like this video, maybe consider subscribing. Now, let's check out the new fuel EXE. So the Trek Fuel EXE is the newest entry in the lightweight e-mountain bike category, with the bike weighing anywhere from 38 to 44 pounds depending on your build. It uses the lightweight compact TQ-HPR50 transmission, which only weighs in at 1,800 grams and it's small enough for its place behind the front chainring for a much cleaner look and it provides 50 newton meters of torque. The bike uses a removable and well hidden 360 watt battery that gives you power for two to five hours. But you can also purchase a 160 watt range extender battery that fits inside the water bottle cage. And this extender battery will cost you $600. There's also a simple yet elegant display that's integrated into the top tube, which will let you see your battery level, range, speed, and assist level. The charging port is on the upper side of the down tube. To control the assist modes, there's a very simple yet intuitive remote next to the dropper lever, which includes a walk mode. All the brake, derailleur, and dropper hosing is internally routed. And the frame is also designed for 34.9 dropper posts. Like its analog counterpart, the EXE has the MinnowLink adjustable flip chip that slackens the head angle by up to half a degree and it lowers the bottom bracket up to 10 millimeters. You may be asking, other than being powered by a motor, is there any other differences between the EXE and the regular fuel? That answer is yes. The first difference is the EXE doesn't have an extra small size, and the sizes available are small to extra large. Also, there's no 27.5 inch wheel option, so if you want the EXE, 29 inch wheels are your only option. Second is the EXE has a 1 degree slacker head angle across all sizes. The chainstay length has also been increased to 4 and 40 millimeters, which is 3 millimeters more than the regular fuel EX. The front rear travel has also been increased by 10 millimeters in all sizes, so it's now 150 millimeters up front and 140 millimeters in the rear. Another change is that with the exception of the lowest build, all of the EXE builds have a piggyback rear shock, whereas none of the regular fuel EXs have any builds with a piggyback shock. And the last major difference, and probably the most obvious, is the shape of the frame is completely different with the EXE, which has more of a sloping design over the regular fuel EX. For the EXE, there are six available builds, and all of them are only available in carbon. And so this video isn't 30 minutes long, I'm only going to do a very basic service level breakdown of each build. First is the 9.5, which is the most affordable build and retails for $6,500 and weighs in at 44 pounds. It comes with a RockShox 35 gold fork, a RockShox Deluxe Select Plus shock, and a Shimano Dior 6100 drivetrain with a 12-speed 51 tooth cassette. There's also Shimano MT4100 four-piston brakes and Alex MD35 wheels with Bontrager hubs. Next is the 9.7, which is the second most affordable build and comes in at $7,600 and weighs in at 42 pounds. It comes with a Fox Rhythm 36 fork, a Fox Performance Float X shock, and a Shimano XT SLX drivetrain with a 12 speed 51 tooth cassette. There's also Shimano MT6100 four piston brakes and Bontrager Line Comp 30 wheels with Bontrager hubs. Next is the 9.8 XT, which is the third most affordable build and comes in at $9,200 and weighs in at 40 pounds. It comes with a RockShox Lyric Select Plus Fork, a RockShox Super Deluxe Select Plus Shock, and a Shimano XT drivetrain with a 12-speed 51 tooth cassette. It also has Shimano XT 4 piston brakes and Bontrager Line Elite 30 carbon wheels with Bontrager hubs. Next is the 9.8 GS Axis, which is the third most expensive build and comes in at $11,000 and weighs 40 pounds. It comes with a RockShox Lyric Select Plus Fork, a RockShox Super Deluxe Select Plus Shock, 
and a SRAM GX axis drivetrain with a 12 speed 52 tooth cassette. It also has SRAM Code R 4 piston brakes and Bontrager Line Elite 30 carbon wheels with Bontrager hubs. Next is the 9.9 .9 XTR, which is the second most expensive build and retails for $13,000 and weighs in an impressive 38.5 pounds. It comes with a RockShox Lyric Ultimate Fork, a RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock, and a Shimano XTR drivetrain with a 12 speed 51 tooth cassette. It also has Shimano XTR 4 piston brakes and Bontrager Line Pro 30 carbon wheels with Bontrager hubs. And last but certainly not least is the 9.9 .9 XX1 Axis, which is the most expensive build and comes in at a heart stopping $14,000 and weighs in at 41 pounds. It comes with a RockShox Lyric Ultimate Fork, a RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Shock, and a SRAM XX1 Axis drivetrain with a 12 speed 52 tooth cassette. It also has SRAM Code RSC 4 piston brakes and Bontrager Line Pro 30 carbon wheels with Bontrager hubs. Overall, I really like the updates and changes that Trek made for the EXE compared to the regular Fuel EX. There's a lot of really cool details and tech that they put into this bike. I think it's a really nice looking bike as well. But like most e-bikes, the one part that really makes me gasp are the prices. And while the regular Fuel EX prices aren't what I refer to as cheap, upgrading to the E version in a similar build costs about an extra 30%. And unfortunately, that's what it seems these e-mountain bikes cost nowadays. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know how you feel about the new Fuel EXE in the comments below. Thank you so much and have a great one.